This sermon is titled Go Take Your Mountain Be Enriched As You Listen All right good morning once again Are you happy to be here Amen Usually what we do uh, in the nearest day service is bring what we call as the word of the Lord. And now I'm just being reminded to tell people to please wear their masks. So I'll follow instructions. Everybody, please wear your masks. And uh, for those of you who are inside the auditorium, keep your masks on. Uh, thank you. So we bring what we call as the word of the Lord uh, for us as a church. Now, you know, we are, as a church, the Lord is working uh, in, in, in his body, in his people. And he's taking us into greater glory because uh, Jesus is coming back for a glorious church. Amen? And the Bible tells us that uh, the glory of the latter house will be greater than that of the former. So uh, what is God, what is the Lord doing with his church? He's just taking us into more glorious things. And so we, as part of the church of Jesus Christ, are moving into greater glory. And so that journey is ongoing. And that's part of our expectation, that we will see more and more of the glory and the work of God are being released. So that's ongoing. Uh, but at the same time, what we do is we say, God, what are you speaking specifically to us as a church? Now, we don't take this lightly. That means we don't just make up something and come and preach uh, on New Year's Day. No, we just uh, look to God and uh, make sure that, uh, you know, that we hear from Him. That there's something He wants to speak to us. But like as we have been doing uh, every New Year's Day when we bring the word of the Lord, uh, we emphasize that this is not the only message God has for us. It is a word. Something that he wants to speak to you and me concerning uh, the year ahead. Something to move us into, to give us focus, to give us direction. But all of us understand that we live by the whole Bible. Amen? We read the whole Bible. We, we, we live by the entirety of the Word of God. So in bringing the Word of the Lord, I need to make that disclaimer every time. Just to let us know that this is not the only message, but this is a word that God is speaking to us as a church. And uh, to you, if you consider yourself part of this body, uh, or if you're here to hear something from God, uh, then this is for you. Now, how does God speak? You know, it's not like there's something written in the cloud or uh, there's some angel that appears. No, he speaks by his Holy Spirit. Uh, he speaks by the inner witness of the Spirit. So it's a very simple way. But we know that when God speaks, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. So you know the voice of the shepherd. So uh, uh, while I do want to emphasize that we are bringing something that we believe God wants us to hear, at the same time, things have to be kept in perspective. Uh, this is not the only word he is speaking to us. So for 2022, as I just looked to the Lord and said, God, you know, what are you saying for us as a church? 2022, uh, this is what I want to speak to us. So first I will mention the word. I be usually captured in a simple statement. And then we will get into the scripture text. So for why don't we stand to our feet? So for 2022, this is what I believe God is speaking to us. He's saying, go take your mountain. Go take your mountain. Conquer your giants and occupy your inheritance. So let's say this together. Go take your mountain. Conquer your giants. Occupy your inheritance. Let's say it one more time. Go take your mountain. Conquer your giants. Occupy your inheritance. Now, if you want to just turn around to the person next to you, tell them that. Go take your mountain. Conquer your giants. Occupy your inheritance. Amen. 
God bless him and be seated. So you say, Pastor, how did you hear it? Well, like I said, God speaks. There's not some handwriting in the sky, but you know, you know when God gives you your word. The scripture text that I would like us to turn to is Joshua, the 14th chapter. Joshua chapter 14. And we're going to read verses 6 to 15. Joshua 14, verses 6 to 15. So please follow along with me in your Bibles, and we will explain what the Word of the Lord is and how do we do this? What is God speaking? What does it mean? And how do we do this? Joshua chapter 14, we're going to read verses 6 through 15. The children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years. Ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now here I am this day, 85 years old. And yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war. Both for going out and for coming in. Now therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him, and gave, him, gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron formerly was Kirjat Arba. Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim, the giants. Then the land had rest from war. Just to give us a little background, now some of us may be familiar with these uh, historical narratives in the Bible. For some of us, this may be uh, new, so uh, I will just quickly review the story behind all of this. You know that as Moses brought the people of God, people of Israel out of Egypt, and they were journeying into Canaan, the land of promise, they came, uh, as part of the journey, they came to the east side of the river Jordan, and all they had to do was to cross over and they would possess the land that God said was theirs. And you read about this in Numbers, the 14th chapter. At that time, God said, Moses, I want you to pick out one leader from each of the 12 tribes. So there were 12 leaders. And he said, tell them to go and spy the land, just to survey the land, come back, and tell you what the land's all about. So Moses picked out these 12 leaders. Among them was Joshua, and then there was Caleb, and there were 10 others. So they went, they crossed over, they went and they spied out the land of Canaan. They spent 40 days surveying the land. And so Moses told them, he said, go look at what the cities are like, what is the land like, what is the fruit, the produce of the land, and bring back some of the produce. So these, they spent 40 days surveying the land, they came back, and they brought back some of the fruit of the land. And, you know, they said, the land is indeed the way God said it. It's a land flowing with milk and honey, meaning it's a delightsome land. It's, it's, it's wonderful. But 
10 of them said, you know, but there are giants in the land. And these cities there are fortified. And these people are big. Uh, you know, we are like grasshoppers in their sight. 10 of them said that. But two of them, Joshua and Caleb said, yes, the lands, the way God said it is flowing with milk and honey. Yes, the cities are fortified and big. And yes, there are giants, but God is with us. So let us go at once and take the land. In other words, they said, God said it's ours. Of course there are giants. Let's go and take it. What's the problem? But as often does, the majority report one. In that case, people believed these 10 uh, spies. They wouldn't go with what Joshua and Caleb said. And so these people wandered in the wilderness for another 39 years, or almost 40 years. God said, all of these people who didn't believe that they could go and take the land because I was with them, they're going to die in the wilderness. So, you know, 40 years went by, and Joshua and Caleb were with the crowd, not because they didn't want to go and take it, but they just have to wait for the Spirit. So now we are in Joshua, the 14th chapter, which is 40 years later. Joshua has become the leader. Moses has passed on. That whole generation who didn't believe had died, and now they've come in to the land. And Caleb says, you know, when I came the first time, I set foot on this mountain. The name of that mountain was Kirjat Arba, meaning the city of giants. Kirjat Arba, the city of Arba, or Arba was of giants. The, the city of giants, I set my foot there. I know there are giants there. But you know what Caleb said? Give me this mountain. I want it. I want it. Give it to me. Now he's 85. But he says, give me this mountain. And Joshua says, the mountain's yours. Go take it. Go take it. I said, that's the word of the Lord. Go take your mountain. Go take your mountain. Now, I realize sitting here today, we have different kinds, you know, people in different stages in life. Some of you are students, college students. Some of you are going to be moving out of college and into your workplace this year. Some of you are in the workplace. Maybe you're running your own business. Maybe you're starting a business. Maybe you're in the corporate world and you, you know, you're in different stages. We have, we have people in different stages in their life. Some of us may be homemakers. You're at home. You're taking care of your family. And so I understand that we, are, we have people here in different seasons of life. But for each of us, the mountain represents something. It represents something that God wants you to have in the season of life. It's something maybe you're carrying in your heart. Say, I always wanted to do that. I always wanted to take that. Maybe as a student, it may be your mountain may be to conquer your studies. Do well. As a young professional, maybe your mountain is to, you know, break through into a, a, a certain level in your professional life or uh, to move into a role. I don't know what your mountain is. It's something that's in your heart. It's something that God wants you to take. For some of us, this mountain may be a life assignment, something that you feel God wants you to, to enter into, something you've been carrying in your heart. Of course, you're busy doing the things you're supposed to be doing, but there's an assignment that you feel you've got to fulfill. Now, we all have responsibilities in life, and we have to, uh, you know, fulfill those responsibilities. But in the midst of all that, there's an assignment inside you. So, like, that's the real thing I want to do. And maybe that is your mountain that God's speaking to you about. And this year, he wants you to step into it. Uh, this mountain could represent an accomplishment, 
a, a place of success that you desire to get into. This mountain could re represent a promise that, that you feel, God, I must have that promise. Maybe it's for your family. Maybe it's for your children. Maybe it's some other area of your life. You've seen the promise and say, God, that's my mountain. I want it. So the mountain could represent something different for each one of us in this current season of our lives. Are you all with me? But the word is, go take your mountain. Go take it. Now, of course, there may be giants. It's not easy. So you need to conquer your giants. Amen. Don't get afraid of them. Go conquer them. Like Caleb. We're going to look at a little more detail on what he did. But we need to go conquer those giants. And that we need to go occupy. Till now, the mountain was something you only dreamt about or you prayed about or you envisioned it. But this year, go occupy your inheritance. Get into it. Amen. Now, from the passage that we just read, I want to highlight, you know, seven steps of faith that Caleb took in order to go take his mountain. I want to just highlight that. And I want to invite us to imitate those steps, follow those steps, what Caleb did. Now, you know, sometimes, like in Caleb's experience, things may be delayed for no fault of his. It was not Caleb's fault that he had to wait 40 years. I mean, he was ready 40 years ago to go take it. He was ready. But because of situations, things were delayed. It was not his fault. But the beautiful thing was, I, even after 40 years, he said, I'm ready. I'm ready to go take it. So sometimes things may be delayed. And, and uh, you may be able to identify or relate to Caleb's experience and say, you know, I wanted this to happen a long time ago. But for whatever reason, things are delayed. But this year, I believe God's word to you is, go take it. Your time's come. Just like Caleb. This is your year to go take your mountain. So... Let's highlight, what did Caleb do? I want to just quickly highlight these seven things. Number one, and I'm putting it as instructions for us, know the word. Know the word. If you look at the same passage in Joshua 14, what did Caleb say? Verse 6, Caleb said, you know the word which the Lord said. Joshua 14, verse 6. Caleb, after 40 years, didn't forget what God spoke. You know the word which God said. And you find it again in verse 12. He highlights it. He says, I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. So what do you think Caleb based his entire mission on? It was on what God said. God had spoken. God had spoken. So, in order for us to take our mountain, for you to take your mountain, know the word of God. Know what God has said to you. What he has promised you concerning that mountain. Know the word of God. Base your mission of going and taking that mountain on the word of God. Because God's word is truth. And God's word will never return to him void. Heaven and earth can pass away. But his word will not pass away. And the God of heaven watches over his word to perform it. I mean, if you know the word of God, you are on solid ground. You are in a space where nothing can defeat you. That's why Joshua said, you know the word which God spoke. So can you imagine for 40 years he held on to it. God said, God said, God said, God said, God said. Joshua, it's 25 years, nothing happened. No, God said. Joshua, 35 years, nothing happened. No, God said. Joshua, 40 years, nothing happened. No, God said. You know the word. It's God spoke. He was so confident. 
that what God had spoken will come to pass. You know, Solomon, in 1 Kings 8, 56, is, he says, there has not failed one word of all his good promises. There has not failed one word of all his good promises. So know the word of God. Establish your mission on the word. Number two is, what do we see Caleb do? He spoke his faith. In verse 7 of Joshua 14, he said, I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. He said, I, I, I just spoke what was in my heart. I saw the giants. I saw those big cities. But my heart said, God will help us. He spoke his faith. He didn't speak how big the giants were. He wasn't impressed by the giants. He wasn't impressed by those fortified cities. He believed and he spoke his faith. So number two, speak your faith. You may be facing giants. Don't be impressed by them. Because your God is bigger than those giants. You may be facing some impregnable situations. Don't be impressed by them. Because the God of heaven is bigger than those things. Learn to speak your faith. And Jesus taught us that. Now, I'm not saying we should live in denial. I'm not saying, don't say there are no giants. No, there are giants. Don't say there are no fortifiers. Yeah, the, the, the situation is like that. But my God is bigger. Amen? And Jesus taught us that. He said, if you have faith, you will say to the mountain, be removed, be cast in the sea. And don't doubt in your heart, you will have what you say. He taught us that. That's how you exercise faith. By the words of your mouth. And Caleb said, I just spoke what was in my heart. I just said what I believe God will do for me. For us. So, number two. As you prepare your mission. To go take your mountain. Whatever that mountain is. As you prepare your mission. To conquer your giants. And occupy your inheritance. First. Know the word of God. Know what God has promised. Number two, speak your faith. Say it. Say, I am going to take this mountain. I am going to conquer my giants. Speak it. Speak what you believe in your heart. God can do for you. The third thing we see Caleb do here, uh, here is this. In verse 8. He says... Nevertheless, my brethren who went with me made the heart of the people melt. In other words, others around, they all spoke unbelief. And they discouraged the people. But what did Caleb do? He rose above unbelief. So that's number three. Rise above unbelief. Let's say it together. Rise above unbelief. You see, there may be people around us who say, look, this can never happen. And just like the ten spies, they said, we are grasshoppers. We are like grasshoppers. We can't conquer those giants. There, will, there may be people around you who may discourage you. They may try to tell you all the reasons why you cannot go take your mountain. But you've got the word of God. God has spoken. God is on your side. He's put that assignment in your heart. So don't let the words people speak or the situations around you discourage you. Rise above unbelief. You see all the people who were in unbelief, they could not enter in to the promised land. They couldn't get in there. But it's people of faith who will go take their mountain. So rise above the unbelief. Don't let the negative things people say put you down. Number four. What else did Caleb do? In that same verse 8 of Joshua 14. Caleb said, I wholly followed the Lord my God. Wholly follow God. 
That means you have a single-minded devotion and a single-minded focus to what God wants you to do. James 1 verse 8 says, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Don't be double-minded. God has called me to take this mountain. I'm going to take it. No discussions. If you want to discuss, go discuss with God. Leave me alone. <laughs> be single-minded in your devotion and in your focus on what God has called you to do. Amen? And I remember in my own personal life, uh, in those years, you know, we spent 10 years in the U.S., and people used to ask me, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to Bangalore. I'm going to start a church. And we had lots of other options. People said, why do you want to go back to India? You can stay here and travel up and down. I said, yeah, that may be good for somebody else, but not good for me. For me, I need to be there. I had a very nice offer. Uh, and again, these are all from good people, right? I'm not saying any one of them are bad. These were good, sincere people. But sometimes good, sincere people can become a distraction. So there was a nice offer. You know, run this Bible college for us. All these international speakers will come. You'll get connections. You'll meet everybody. But sadly, it was not here in India. I said, sorry, it's not for me. It's not for me. I appreciate the offer, but that's not for me. Why? If you want to go take your mountain, you've got to have single-minded focus. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all those ways. He's not going to accomplish anything. Are you listening? You've got to have single-minded focus. That's my mountain. I'm going to take it. I'm going after that. Single-minded focus. Caleb wholly followed the Lord his God. His whole heart was following God. God said, that mountain is for me. That's it. I'm following God till I take that mountain. Are you listening? Wholly follow the Lord your God. Number five, what else do we see Caleb do? This is in verse 11 of Joshua 14. He said, I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Somehow, he kept himself strong. So, that's number five. Keep yourself strong. Life is a marathon, not a sprint. Sometimes we like to sprint the marathon. <laughs> There's so much to do. But you got to think long term. Think endurance. Keep yourself strong. And especially strong on the inner man. In the inner man. Keep yourself strong spiritually. As you prepare to go take your mountain, as you prepare for this mission this year, 2022, I'm going to take my mountain. Keep yourself strong, spiritually. Feed upon the word of God. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in tongues. Two things God has given to us to strengthen our inner man. The word of God is able to build you up and give you an inheritance of those or sanctified by faith. John wrote to the young, to the, to the young men in 1 John 2, 14. He said, young men, you are strong because the word of God is in you and you have overcome the wicked one. So let the word of God be in you. Take time to feed your spirit with the word of God. Read the word, meditate in it. Listen to the word. And pray in the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 3, 16 says, you are strengthened with might by his spirit in your inner person. 
So the Holy Spirit strengthens you on the inner person. So pray in tongues. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourself strong. Sometimes we have, we have a lot of fervor, a lot of excitement. But that lasts for a short time. It's like a shooting star. But if you want to make a difference, you've got to have endurance. You've got to maintain strength over time. And that's what Caleb did. He said, I am strong today as I was then. And I'm translating that for us in a spiritual sense. Spiritually, keep yourself strong. Number six, last two. Number six. Conquer your giants. This is in verse 12. He says, give me this mountain. I will be able to drive them out. So Caleb says, I'm going to go. I'm going to face those giants. I'm going to drive them out. So conquer your giants. What are those things that are intimidating you today? Those are your giants. Conquer them. What are those things that are staring you in the face and telling you, you cannot take this mountain? Those are your giants. Conquer them. Amen? Go face them. Like Caleb said, I will drive them out. And if you look in the next chapter, in chapter 15, verses uh, 13 to 15, that's exactly what he did. He goes to that place, Kirjat Arba, the city of the giants, and there are these three big leaders, giant leaders, the sons of Anakim, and he goes and drives them out, conquers. So you've got to go conquer your giants, face them. What is it? Are they fears? Face them, conquer them. The last thing we see, number seven, is this. In verse 13, it says, Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb. Now, it's a very simple statement. Joshua gave Hebron to Caleb. That doesn't mean he handed it to him in a platter. It simply means he turned around and said, Caleb, go take it. But Caleb had to go and occupy that mountain. Joshua said, Caleb, you want it? Go take it. And he had to go and occupy that mountain. So go into that space. Go into what God has for you. Occupy it. Put your foot on that mountain. Get in there. Maybe from all this while you've been looking at it from a distance. This year, get into it. Now, Kirjat Arba, the city of giants, became Hebron once Caleb took it over. Hebron means community. It means a place of friendship. What was once a city of giants, you can imagine, people were afraid to go in there, became Hebron, a community, a place of friendship. Because Caleb went in there, took it over. So that's the transformation you can bring when you go occupy your mountain. Are you with me? You can bring about a change when you go take your mountain, when you conquer your giants, and when you occupy your inheritance. Amen? Amen? Worship team, please come. We're going to take some time to pray. I want you to pray over this message, over this word to you. God is telling you, go take your mountain. What is your mountain? What is it that's in your heart that you feel you need to go? And take in this season of life. It's different for each one of us, but 2022, go take your mountain, conquer your giants, occupy your inheritance.
We saw the example of Caleb. I'll quickly review these seven steps of faith. Know the word of God. Know what God has promised in his word. Because that word will never fail. Speak your faith. Say what you believe. Don't talk about the giants and all the problems yet they're there. But say what you believe. Number three, rise above unbelief. There may be people who would discourage you. Sometimes the reports can be discouraging, but rise above unbelief. Number four, holy follow God. Holy follow God. Be single-minded about this. Don't be double-minded because double-mindedness brings instability. Single-minded focus. That's my mountain. I'm going for it. Keep yourself strong. Strengthen yourself by his word and by his spirit. Conquer your giants. Go face them. Have the attitude of an overcomer. Have the attitude of a conqueror because you are more than a conqueror. Go face your giants. God will help you conquer them. Occupy your inheritance. Caleb went in. Took over that city of the giants and he turned it to Hebron. A place of community. A place of friendship. God's waiting to do that. But he wants you there. He wants you to go take that mountain. Amen. Can we rise to our feet please. I want to just pray over us this morning. There are things I'm praying about for myself. For us as a church. I say God. I want us as a church to touch one million lives in the city of Bangalore. One million lives. That's what I've been praying for. You say, but what about the legislation? Well, the church isn't bothered. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not stop it. No legislation of man can stop it. No opposition of man can stop it. Jesus is building his church. Amen. Make whatever rule you want. But the church will keep growing. <laughs> so, say, God, one million souls in Bangalore. Thousands of churches in India. And hundreds of churches around the world. That's my mountain. That's what I'm believing God for. I pray. I see God. I say, God, I want to see it happen. It's not by might, it's not by power. It's by His Spirit. Amen. Imagine being able to serve a million people in our city. Man cannot stop us from doing it. Man cannot stop the Holy Spirit. Amen. Imagine thousands of Spirit-filled, Word-filled churches around our country. Nobody can stop it. Nobody can stop it. And imagine churches around the world. You know, thank God today we are training people around the world. And it's just amazing. People connect and being trained. And we have churches around the world full of the word of God, full of the spirit. They don't have to be called APC. But they have to be full of God. That's, that's it. Amen. That's my mountain. That's what I'm believing God for. What are you believing God for? It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by His Spirit. Amen. So take some time right now. Say, God, single-minded focus. I'm going to take my mountain. Whatever it is, in this season of life, I want you to pray. This is my mountain, God. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Just pray.
to see the promised land. Though this pain will end the plan, there is victory in the end. Your love is my battle cry. When my fears like Jericho, there was a As we stand here this morning, and for everyone watching online, God, we've released the word. Go take your mountain, conquer your giants, and occupy your inheritance. Lord, speak to each person individually, Father. Make it very personal. Make it very real to every heart. Empower each one of us by your spirit to go take the mountain or the mountains you've assigned for our lives. This year, 2022, just like how you brought Caleb to that place. When he went and he took on Kirjat Arba and made it Hebron. May we have testimonies from everyone's life saying, God help me take my mountain. This year, young and old, and everyone say, God help me. Take my mountain. I drove out the giants. And I occupied my inheritance. God, may every life testify. May everyone testify. 2022. God help me. God help me take my mountain. It may have been delayed, but this year they take it. They take it. So do it, Father. 
So do it in the lives of your people. So do it, God. So do it. May every mouth testify and give you praise that you help them do it, God. Thank you. And we bless you. We honor you. Strengthen each one. Fill us with courage. Fill us with confidence. Fill us with wisdom. And the grace we need to see this happen. We thank you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship, His em the empowering fellowship of His Holy Spirit, be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone said, Amen. 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 Say, let's say this together. Go take your mountain. Go take your mountain. Conquer your giants. Occupy your inheritance. Go do it. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, publication, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, please visit apcbiblecollege.org. Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play Store.